To me, service means to be able to use the things that you might have been given to give back to those that might not have been given the same opportunities. It's an opportunity for us to express our gratitude for all that we've been given. Service is giving back to our community. We come from a place of privilege where we're able to have so much, so it's important to be able to give back to the people that have helped us along the way. I would describe myself as belonging to a lot of communities. The community of being an African American woman, the athletic community. Obviously my family. Back home in Chicago, there's a big Japanese community. We're a pretty big group and we stick together. My community is one that has helped me to be able to succeed and elevate my life. They are very much my support system. I want to know what they're going through, what's going on in their lives, and how I can help support them and build stronger relationships with them and the people they care about too. I think there's a lot of ways that you can serve that are beneficial to both the big and small schemes of things in your community. Service in my community may be donating food, helping out with toy drives, helping the neighbors shovel the snow because, you know, they're elderly or something and just giving back or being a positive influence on somebody. We always have viewed it as just giving back and thinking about outside of yourself. My mom ran a nonprofit for a long time for homeless veterans and so I'm really actually passionate about helping homeless people and people less fortunate. I consider myself a servant leader and what I aspire to do is to say yes. I rarely say no uh, anytime I'm asked to do anything. I grew up in a household where my dad was a pastor and my mom was a high school teacher. My entire childhood life was watching them serve others, serving others and making sure that we're all connected and making each other better. I really think that that was Dr. Martin Luther King's legacy. My hope for the future is that people will be more understanding and accepting of the progress that we've made and understand that that progress isn't complete and we're not exactly where Martin Luther King envisioned America would be and we still have a little ways to go. My goal for the future is ultimately to be able to give back to whoever I can whenever I can. I hope that my kids grow up in a world that is welcoming of people. And that we can have more icons just like MLK, more people to look up to that can help better their community and better society as a whole and the people we live around. I often wonder sometimes when I'm mentioned you know, in the media or in some type of article or online, African-American coach comes up. And I can see why. I mean, out of 130 schools, there's maybe 11, 12, 13 black head coaches. So I get that. But at some point, I would like to see someone as myself not be considered a black coach, but just a coach. The reason we do celebrate MLK Day more so to me than any other holiday is that it's what America is all about. It's what this country was founded on. That's what America is about. It's about liberty and justice for all, and that's what Martin Luther King fought for. We need to celebrate not just one day, but really be mindful every day of his message and his commitment to what a better future can be. Because Dr. King wasn't just a man, he was a movement. He still is a movement for today, tomorrow, the future beyond for generations, beyond generations. He died for us and he had a dream to make the world a better place and that's what we need to do ourselves. So it's not one person, it takes all of us to build and make the society better. Hey, I'm Mitchell Landowski. Welcome to our apartment. So our living room, kitchen, everything we need. These are my roommates, Jeremy, Griffin, Eric, and our cat, Ted. We'll go to my room quick. Nothing crazy, just pretty basic. Try to keep as much stuff down from the walls as I can. Um, great here is, you know, this Brett Hall jersey I got from Nash Neenhouse's dad. Um, he knows Brett Hall, they're buddies, so I mentioned to Nash that we were, uh, that he was my favorite player growing up, and then, you know, a couple weeks later I got this in the mail, and, you know, it was pretty cool, he signed it right to me, and be strong, stay strong, your friend, Brett Hall, and then uh, the Hall of Fame 2009, which he got introduced, so pretty cool, something I'll have, uh, you know, the rest of my life. Bro. Hey, <laughs> my name's Eric Mindendorf. My room's up next. Just to get into the wall art, I got a tapestry of an astronaut above my bed. 
Um, and then the Arizona flag, got to rep the 602. That's up behind my TV. Um, where I play Xbox with the guys and stuff and, and watch Christmas movies, you know. These are picture frames of family members, my old billet families, host families, basically people that I just care about that give me a gift. It's, it's a picture frame, so if you give me one of those, it's it's probably going up on the desk. And then um, the, other, the other coolest part about my room is probably just the closet, you know, keeping it neat. The, the shoe collection, I'm starting a little something, getting something going, the white Oreo 4s. Uh, yeah, just, just a big shoe guy. I respect the shoe game. Yeah, that's pretty much it in here, and um, yeah, that's my crib. One of the probably the funniest things about our, our cat, Ted, anytime you open the fridge and shake for a little ice cube, he goes nuts for it. My name is Griffin Locker, and this is my room. Right away, I have my old Fargo Junior jersey up. Uh, pretty special year, I was lucky enough to win with a good group of guys. Some more wall art, uh, there's a nice little pair of hockey skates up there. From Buffalo, New York, so big Bills fan, Bills Mafia, gotta represent the flag. Got a nice little helmet on there on my desk as well, a little nightstand. Also my nightstand, I gotta give a shout out to my mom. Wouldn't be here without it, that's for sure. This tapestry right here I actually got before I came to state, so I had no idea what any of these buildings were. Obviously I knew what Mun was, but to come to school and see the rest of these in person, it was really cool to see. Uh, and then finally just my desk where I do the rest of my homework, study, and uh, prepare for the week's work. Jerry just took a one nothing lead, so you don't know what's gonna happen in this game now. <laughs> How you feeling about that, bro? Not great. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Jeremy Davidson. I'm a forward here on the MSU hockey team, and this is my room. So over here, I got my Fargo jerseys that I brought back with me. That's where I played last year in the USHL. Uh, another picture I got uh, is with my mom. Brought that everywhere with me as well. Um, big part of my life, but um, over here, just got like my desk and stuff, and kind of where I just do all my homework. Um, we got a Stephen Curry jersey over here. I've always been a big fan of him. And then over here, above my bed, I got a painting from my grandpa, Gene. He's my great grandfather. It's been in my room my entire life. So something I just wanted to bring with me. So that's about it. So originally when we moved in, uh, we kind of wanted to have a pet of some sort in the house just to you know, make it a little more fun around here. And uh, we thought seahorses would be pretty cool because I don't know anyone that owns seahorses, so I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, that ended up falling through and then uh, went to the Constellation Cat Cafe, saw Ted and that was it. We fell in love, so now we're four cat dads. Thanks for stopping by and checking out our apartment, but you guys gotta get out of here. It's Ted time. This is a very close team, you know. We got a chance but we got us now start making a run where we know we're going to be consistent. That's the next word we got to change. We got to get consistent and we got to take that process and make sure that when we go from A to B, that we have faith that it's going to keep growing, you know? We're going to screw up now and then, but damn it guys, we're, we're, we're in a position, we're in a place. We're all in a place that's a good place. And let's take advantage of it. So they all count one and they're all big. And the one thing for sure, Matt, we do know, there is no easy opponent in this league this year. Not at all. The parity is, is top to bottom. It's fantastic. And Michigan State has to be ready every time out. This Minnesota team can be very dangerous because they have capable scores that can put up big numbers. We saw that last time we played them. We didn't win by much. And there's some of the numbers point that Minnesota could very be very well upset-minded tonight. Paint Curry goes right to Bingham. There's a block, but it comes back to Minnesota. And they flip it back down low to Curry for his second bucket of the game. Lowly. Jump shot from the elbow. No good. Another rebound comes out now to Akins. Down court it comes to Christie. Here comes a long one. He got it. Wow. 14-10. Seems like a huge lead in this game. Willis forcing a shot in the paint. No good. Rebound gathered up by Walker on the run. He doesn't have numbers, so he'll pull it out. But he flips into a trailing Christie for the slam dunk. Wow, what vision by Walker and slam by Christie. Man, 
And you said vision, you're not kidding. Here comes the second long ball of the game. That one short. Rebound comes out to Malik Hall. Now over there to Walker. Back to Hall, to Brown, up front for three. He got it! Wow, all cylinders working right now for Michigan State. So that's the first three of the game for Gabe Brown. And MSU now has its biggest lead of the game. Minnesota being methodical now goes over to Curry. Jump shot from the side is good. Curry really just relying on that pick and pop shot right now, not getting anything else down low. Now to Chrissy, wide open for a three. He got it. Battle flips it in. Now to Lowy. Over it goes now to Willis for a three. Oh my goodness. And they're going to count it. We've hit the halfway point here this evening. And it's Michigan State 34, Minnesota 31. This is exactly what Minnesota wanted. They want to get us into a slow pace slugfest. A jumper from the free throw line. And we got a one point game 34 33. At the elbow. Doesn't shoot. Fires a pass over to Aikens. Back to Walker. Here comes a three. Minnesota's call a timeout. One bucket and we're tied up along when they lead it. He's working on Joey. Step back two. Baseline good. And we are tied at 51. Both these ball clubs are used to scoring a lot more than they're scoring now. At the elbow. Now the hall. Here comes a three. He got it. Well, if you're going to get your first points, why not do it that way? Why not? With the ball, Brown at 61-57 Michigan State. With the ball, Hall working on Curry. Can't do much with him, but finally he'll fire anyway. Wow! He spun so many times, I'm surprised he's not dizzy. Stevens down the lane, forces the shot over the top of Brown. Is good! That was a tough shot. And now it's a one-point game. Boy, a bucket here would be nice. That'd be huge. Coming off a pick, Christy! From the elbow, two more. Two-point game, 33.3 seconds left. Go for a but Spartans lead by a deuce. Now goes over to Stevens, takes Christy down the lane. His shot is blocked by Hall, but they call a foul. He's two out of three from the stripe. Shot is away, and it is good. Now it's a one-point game with one more free throw coming. Here comes the shot. It's away, and we are tied at 69. Well, MSU can play for the final shot. See what Michigan State comes up with. Ball comes into the point guard, that being A.J. Hogarth. They're going to run it down to 10 seconds, Matt, before they go for it. Here we go. 10 seconds. Hogarth gives it over now to Kristen. Five seconds. Three seconds. Hogarth down the lane. A bullet pass to Hauser up. And it's in! It's in! Joey Hauser made the winner! Wow, what a pass by A.J. Hogard and Hauser with a presence of mind to catch and finish. What a way to run your winning streak to nine straight and stay in first place in the Big Ten. Hey, my baby Wap gives it down. Game time. Game time. Game Michigan State, it all starts and ends with their senior leader, Nia Cloud. Cloud, who has been named to countless amount of preseason awards from all Big Ten first team to the Wooden Award watch list. Nia Clowden is a silent assassin. Here's Cloud, driving right, crossing over at the free throw line, pump fake, the jumper, it's up, bang, ruthless, 50 points. Nia Clowden, the greatest scoring performance in program history. A 50-point performance from Nia Clowden. 
She affects every part of the stat sheet. I mean, I think the kid can score, but I also think, you know, she's leading us in assists too. She, she gets to the free throw line the most. Um, she has probably the most steals on our team. She's been a really good defensive rebounding guard for us, so she rebounds the ball. I feel like she just hits the stat sheet, and really great players do. When I mean, you look back at some of the top draft picks here, um, kids that have worn this uniform, I mean, they're not just a scorer or not just a defender. I mean, they're able to do a little bit of everything, and I think that kind of shows and helps her be the best she can be. She just shows up, and she's quiet, and she's focused, and she's relentless, just ruthless, and there's just something about that mid-range jumper she has. I mean, she's quick, she's tough, she can get to the cup, and she can shoot the three, but that mid-range jumper kind of around the circle, around either elbow near the free throw line, it's where she hit her 1,000th career point. Nia Cloud, elbow jumper, got it to go! That's 1,000 career points for Nia Cloud, and she does it with her signature elbow jumper. It's so clean, it's so pure, and it just feels so mean sometimes. You know, you're in transition, she gets to that spot and she just drills it and it goes through. It doesn't bounce around the rim. It hits nothing but the little back of that nylon and the net and it goes right through it. It just, it feels like it's just an ice dagger going through the opponent's chest sometimes when she hits it in those big spots. And then she'll do it three out of six possessions. You know, she'll just rattle it off. Her approach is very silent. And I think that has an incredible weight when it comes to her influence on the people around her or her ability to motivate and bring people together. She's smart. She's really catches on to things um, both on and off the court. I think you know her consistency in the classroom, what a great student she is getting her master's degree. It's not surprising. Again, I just call her the quiet assassin when it comes to her personality too because she'll be dead quiet and then she'll say something really, really funny or have a really interesting perspective about something and she puts a smile on your face because she doesn't say a lot and when she does, it's kind of like the E.F. Hutton commercial, you know. <laughs> when Nia speaks, you listen, you know. She's got such a, an understated kind of energy that I'm gonna beat you, I'm hungry, I'm gonna win, I'm gonna go one-on-one, -on -one, I'm gonna take you down, I'm gonna rip the soul out of your chest, and the look on my face is gonna be nothing. I'm gonna have just a stonewall look on my face while I remove your body from your soul and beat you in this one-on-one -on -one spot. She's just so crafty. I mean, right here, what do you do? The jab step, she's so quick with the ball. And there are not a lot of players who can stop that quickly and elevate like that in the mid-range. And you have to be there to contest, but contesting without fouling on a jump shot, especially when that shooter's Nia Cloud. Ice cold, Nia Cloud. She ties the game. With Nia, I think the one thing about her, she started a certain kind of way as she came here. She was really good off the bounce going downhill. She could get to the rim. She had a nice pull-up jumper, which a lot of girls don't have, and now she's really built that three ball. So being a three-level scorer, I think, is something that is enticing not only in why she's been successful at Michigan State, but also I think what's gonna help her in the future in the WNBA. You can see it in those little flashes, right? Like her emotion on the court isn't big. It isn't super loud. Although you see it every now and again. You know, you saw it in that 30-point that game against Michigan in 2021. You saw it in that 28-point second half or whatever it was against Indiana in the uh, quarterfinals of the Big Ten tournament in 2021 where she just went off. Clouded has flipped the switch. You can see a little bit of that fire kind of come out, but it's so small and it's in the looks, right? It's in the, it's in the daggers that are coming out of her eyes. I think her confident and assertiveness comes from the hard work and preparation that she has put in. She knows that she can be confident and aggressive and assertive on the court because she knows what she brings to the table and she knows her worth in terms of basketball and as a leader and as a teammate. And she is, I think, starting to demand respect in that way. She doesn't have to say a lot, she just gets the job done. And I think there's you know, a lot to be said for kids today now that, that can stay that consistent and perform at such a high level.
We're early in the Big Ten season, and as soon as we get into this gnarly Big Ten schedule that's coming, because the Big Ten is as good as it's ever been, you know, she's gonna have the opportunity to put together some of those really big time signature moments, and I can't wait. You know, you look at seniors, and you look at the way they kind of finish their career, it's so often that all of a sudden you start to see that clock starting to wind out, and you get that extra sense of urgency, and I can't wait to see what that environment does for a player like Nia Cloud, and I think Spartan Nation's gonna have a lot of fun watching that unfold. My mentality this year on the court has been to just dominate who's ever in front of me and then um, also bring our teammates along and try to instill confidence in all of us in, in hopes to get the win at the end. I would say I'm definitely just focused on playing basketball. Those watch lists and stuff, they're really good and I'm very honored to be on them. But I know to stay on them and to hopefully win one of them, I have to just keep playing my game and keep working hard in practice. At the end of the day, it's, it's really all just about playing basketball. That's what I love to do. That's what I have the most fun doing. And if the awards come, they come, and, and those will be fun too. But at the end of the day, it's really just about basketball.